Marissa. How are you? I'm good. Can you see me and hear me? Okay. I can see you and hear you. Can you hear, see and hear me? I can. You look fantastic. You sound fantastic. So, um, guys, before we get into what Tori has to share with us tonight, we are going to have two special guests on our call tonight. The idea is that this call is going to be beneficial for every single person on it. So, um, you also still have more time to get people on the call. So if you are interested in doing a hybrid system, an in-home system, or fully telesales, what we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to take them as the top producers from each one of those systems, and we're going to talk to them, and we're going to go through the breakdown of everything that is entailed, okay? So Tori DeMarco tonight is going to talk to us about a lot of stuff, but primarily her in-home sales. Um, so this is going to be for anybody who's interested in doing in-home sales, who's doing in-home, and how you can get better at what you're already doing. So um, Tori, thank you so much for joining us tonight. For anybody who doesn't know who you are, I can't imagine that they wouldn't, but can you give us like the quick two-minute rundown of your um, how long you've been with FFL and your experience? Of course, I am uh, Tori DeMarco. I'm supposed to be Tori Allsbury, but haven't changed my last name yet. Um, but I have been with Family First Life for about a year and a half now. Um, I definitely um, did not work fully during that time. Um, I used a wedding as an excuse to not work for about six months for no reason. <laughs> Um, but I came back a few months ago and I've just dove completely back in and, um, we've built a team and, you know, our team is doing absolutely incredible and I'm so proud. Um, and I'm so grateful to just be a part of domination and now, you know, uproar is just going up and we're, we're killing it. And Markel's going to get her logo for sure this month. It's in the bag. So I'm really excited for that and for her. And, um, yeah, that's, that's really, you know, just the gist of it. Yeah, I love it. And and you guys, Tori has been somebody who has that I really want to ham on because she has so much insight to so many things in this business, including being a new agent that didn't like, like she came out of the gate and killed it, but she's also gone through a lot of the ups and downs in the business that sometimes you can go through. So um, Tori, what I want to jump into tonight, and I have a lot of questions, um, but what I want to jump into tonight is first of all, can you go, um, can you go over why um, you know, what happened to you at the beginning of the business and why that sort of consistency for new agents is like the most important thing, like ride or die in this business. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've never worked in insurance ever prior to FFL. So it was something completely new and extremely uncomfortable for me. Um, I was fortunate enough that my very first week I got licensed, Miss Ashley Gromberg and Marissa flew me out to do a quick travel trip in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, in that trip, um, I was able to protect five families, which was absolutely incredible. Um, I, you know, it gave me a large sense of purpose and it also was more money than I had ever made prior. So that was very exciting for me. Um, but with that being said on the opposite end of it, I came home and I was like, oh my gosh, I just protected five families. I can just like chill now. You know, what is it? I don't have to do anything for the rest of the, the month because I made what I made in a month in a couple days. Um, and that was probably the worst thing I could do for myself. And I would be lying if I told you guys that I miss consistency. 1000% I'm not. It's something that, you know, I work on every day. Um, and that's in all aspects of my life. Um, but I do think that it's really important, like, because what happened was I protected five families. It was really good, but it was something that was so new to me. And then it's very natural. Chargebacks are natural in any type of sales job. So, you know, I got a chargeback and I wasn't super, all of a sudden I had, you know, $500 that I owed a carrier. And that was like something that was so unheard of and very uncomfortable to me as well. Um, I'm sorry, Marissa, can you hear all that? No, I can just hear your dogs drinking water, but we love them. So it's fine. Okay, great. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, you know, um, the best thing that I could have done for myself at that time, looking back now is if I would have just came back to Arizona and, you know, bought more leads and continue to work, you know, instead I thought I was living this high life. And then it also came time where I didn't work for three weeks. Well, I made so much money. I thought that I was, you know, mommy war bucks and I was going out and, you know, live my best life doing whatever I wanted to do. And then it was time, my bank account started to get low and it's time for me to buy leads and pay my bills. And, and I had no money for this stuff. And I had, you know, just one single chargeback, but at the time that chargeback seemed like a lot to me. Yeah. Um, so it was something that definitely set me back. And if that's one thing that I could go back and, you know, tweak in myself, it would have been that I would have created a better habit of being consistent from the beginning, because I'm honestly trying to relearn that in the last you know, five months that I've been back in the business and it's, 
it would have just been a lot easier if I did it from the beginning for sure. Yeah. And Tor, let's not, you know, and, and I, you know, kind of forgot to say this before you guys, cause Tori's so real and raw and she brings so much to the business, but also like you're a powerhouse. Like now fast forward, you have a huge growing agency. You guys are over a hundred families a month, probably closer to 150 families this month. And you yourself lead from the front and do over 10 families a week. So the one thing about you too, Tor, is that you have, um, you know, you came out a little bit, you tried the telesales, you were like, mm, not really sure if that's my thing. And that's what I want to get off this call to you guys is that if something's working for you, stick to it. So Tori, you still are actually travel tripping. You go up to Northern Arizona, you drive, you stay in hotels, you get your leads, you go out, you door knock, you do all of, you know, kind of in our world, the old school way. Can you talk about, um, you know, who should stay in the home when it's important to stay in the home and kind of what your schedule lead flow, just give us a whole breakdown of what you as an in-home producer look like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I dial on Mondays and Thursdays. And I try to book 15 or more appointments, um, especially for me, um, because I do go up to Yavapai, Mojave, and Coconino almost every week. Um, So I try and, you know, it's very important that I set myself up for success and I make sure that I have as many appointments set up for the time while I'm there. So to stack the odds in my favor. Um, So so I dial on Monday. Real quick. So you're, so you're driving up there real quick. Why aren't you just calling the leads and selling them over the phone? Why are you driving three, four hours up there to do those? To be very transparent. I'm not very good at it. (laughs) Um, you know, I'm definitely still trying to learn and I'm trying to implement that. Um, you know, every now and then on a dial day, someone will be like, can we do it now? And I'm like, yes, perfect. You know, and I try and sell over the phone because of course I want to be able to help future agents in how to sell over the phone. Um, but to be very raw and honest, um, I am not good at it. I can, I am much better face to face. I definitely think I have a very particular personality. And I think sometimes it's a little easier to take my personality in person than it is over the phone. Um, I think there's a lot of different things that go into it and I'm, I'm not confident. I'm uncomfortable with it. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. I'm extremely uncomfortable. Um, it took me a while to get comfortable to selling in the home. Um, and I feel like I do have that down, you know, I can go in a home and we'll drink tea and we'll protect your family all day. Um, but doing it over the phone is still very uncomfortable for me and I haven't gotten that down yet. Um, so I think it's, you know, I, I can't sacrifice my, my bills and help it being, having the flexibility to support the team when they need help with certain things, just because I, I don't want to drive, you yeah. know, that's and, not realistic. And it works. Yeah. It works. And it, like you yeah. protect 10 families a week in the home. So why would you change it? Exactly. So, okay. So Tori, you, you dial on Mondays and Thursdays, no less than 15 appointments. Um, when do you, how many times a week do you buy leads? Um, I buy leads. Uh, well, right now, um, I have leads that just come in daily, (laughs) um, which is super helpful. Um, but whenever I need to supplement, because those aren't enough, um, I will always buy leads and make sure I have them ready to go. I will buy them on a Sunday night and make sure that I have them exported and ready to go for dial day. And then I'll buy them on a Wednesday night and make sure that they're exported and ready to go for dial day on Thursday. Okay, perfect. So you're booking 15 appointments, then you are going in the home. Talk to us about how your schedule looks in the home. Um, what's your, what's your show ratio versus how many do you close? What do you do in between appointments? Like you're in the car. What do you do if you get no showed or whatever? Um, yeah, absolutely. So getting no showed is something that's inevitable. It happens to every single one of us. Um, I usually either, I always have a stack of printed out leads. So I will either go dial those depending on how close they are to me in vicinity. If, um, any of you are out there and you're, you know, trying to get a hang of door knocking road warrior is a really, really good app to have. Uh, I think it lets you do like eight leads at a time and it will actually tell you based on where you at, where you're located, the easiest and fastest way for you to hit all those houses and door knock them. Um, so that's a really good tool that I recommend everybody have if you don't. Um, so I'll either do that or depending on where I'm at compared to where most of the leads I wasn't able to get in contact where are, I will also just sit down and dial them. Um, that's actually what I did last week. And the first guy I dialed, he was like, oh yeah, I've been waiting for someone to call. And I was able to help him in the car. Um, and that was, you know, something that was really exciting. As far as, you know, no show rates and everything like that, um, I have been doing this for a little bit now. So I definitely have a confidence when I go and I sit down with people. Um, So my no show rate, I'm very fortunate. It's really not bad. I would say maybe like a 10% no show rate every now and then guys, it definitely happens where 
no one wants to sit with me <laughs> in a day. It's just like, I have like this rain cloud over me and no one is home when I get there. That absolutely happens. Um, but I'm so sorry. Hold on one second. Sorry, my dogs are back to probably chug more water. So I apologize. My husband's trying to get them out, but very sorry about that. Um, so I, uh, my no-show rates aren't super high. Um, and I think too, a lot of things is it's just about getting in front of people. You know, if someone opens the door and even if they're like, oh, I'm not really feeling good today. It's like, okay, well, no big deal, Marissa. I'm so sorry you're not feeling good, but this is only going to take 10 to 15 minutes. And I actually drove two and a half hours here for you. So let's just get it done. You know, um, and I think that that's a really easy way to kind of get in the door. I mean, there's been so many families that I've, um, you know, I've opened the door and said, oh, today's not a good day. And then you get in the home and they end up being the nicest people and you're able to protect the family. Um, and as far as, you know, going into the home, I think it's really important that you like establish control immediately. Um, so immediately, it does, if they seem like they're going to head to their couch or they're going to, you know, turn on the TV or do whatever it is, I'm like, you know, hey, Marissa, do you have a table we can sit at? It's just really important. And I, and I want to make sure that we're both on the same page and we're able to give one another, you know, our undivided attention. Um, and I carry all of the tools with me. Um, I have a box in my, tr in my trunk filled with every single brochure, um, that, you know, things to help them create a will, um, final wish programs, everything like that, which really help a lot too. It, it gives you guys a lot of credibility, just being able to leave them with something physical instead of just being a card and, you know, Hey, here's my name on a piece of paper. And this is what we applied for. Cause a lot of times too, I do think that people in the moment, you know, you're there, you're in front of them and it's great. And then I think that you leave. And then all of a sudden, if they don't have anything, they're like, I just gave some stranger, my social security number, my banking information, everything to steal my identity. And what do I have for it? Um, so that really helps too. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's huge tour. And you guys, what I, what I want you to get out of that too, is like, she said, like, if someone's it, like, how many people Tori, that you show up and they're like, Oh, I didn't remember the appointment. Oh yeah. Like, it, it happens. All perfect. The time. Well, I remembered. Great. I'm here. And the other thing too, is like just brochures, you guys having credibility, being able to go in the home and build that rapport with people. It's a lot harder for someone to kick you out of their house than it is to hang up on you. So, um, Tori, you went over, you know, kind of establishing control. You went over the brochure. She does have a crazy, insane file folder in the back of her car, which I don't even know how she fits it in there, but, um, credibility and also guys, and, and that's going to make your clients trust you as well. How many, what are the chances of an agent coming out and replacing one of your policies, Tori? Probably not good at all. No. And I think something too, that's um, important is, you know, I always tell them that this isn't just like a one and done thing. I always make sure that they know I will, I'm your girl for the rest of your life. So, and I make sure too, that I tell them, I always also mention, you know, I don't work for the insurance companies. I work with the insurance companies. I work for you. So what that means, Marissa, is I promise you that I will always do what's in your best interest. So if in, you know, two months from now, someone sits down with you, Marissa, and they're telling you that they can get something better, call me, put me on speaker. And if it's better, I'll cancel your policy for you and we'll get you in that position. But I promise you, I am putting you in the best position yeah. possible. And, you know, if it's, and if there's anything that seems like it can beat it right now, we want to make sure that we can look at the fine print because there might be a chance that in the long run, you know, whether it's increasing premiums or decreasing, you know, uh, face value, whatever it is, they're probably not the best position for you. Yeah, that's huge. Um, so Tori, a lot of new agents, they go in the home and they want to have like paralysis by analysis. Like I need to know all the products. What do I do? So I'm a brand new agent. You just hired me. I'm going in the home for my first appointments. What are you telling me to do for tomorrow? fill out the financial inventory. That's all you have to do. That's honestly, that was the one thing um, I can relate to so many people when they come in and they say that because I was so nervous. I mean, Marissa, I don't know if you remember, but I mean, I was nervous I when someone just answered the phone. I was like, uh, Hey, it's me, Tori click. I don't know what to say. Um, but you know, uh, and I was so nervous to go in the homes because I felt so uneducated and so ignorant on everything that we had to offer. And I didn't really even know what we did offer. Um, and I remember just like, Ashley was just like, get out of your head, knock it off, fill out the financial inventory call. Me. And she genuinely did the appointment for me just over the phone. I was just like, Oh, you know, and Marissa, is this for neuropathy? And now she's like, Oh, it is. Okay. We got to go prosperity or whatever it is. Like it was just, it's so easy. 
Um, but the most important thing is that the financial inventory is filled out accurately from top to bottom. Like um, that's one thing that I always tell everybody, you know, help, help me help you help any, all your managers help you um, fill it out as accurately as you can. You know, um, like sometimes you'll get people who want to be brief and it's like, oh, I'm on a high blood pressure medication. Okay. That's great, Marissa. But um, do you know the name of that? Or do you have those bottles? Cause I'm going to need to see them because there's some medications that can also be prescribed for high blood pressure that also indicate congestive heart failure. So it's really important that I know those types of things. Um, and it's really important that you guys know those types of things, just being able to be like, no, I'm so sorry, but unfortunately I do need a list of the medications, um, and being able to write it down. And then I, you can either call me or call your manager on the phone and say, you know, Hey, Marissa, it's, it's Tori. I'm sitting here with Betty. Um, she's great. She's an 82 year old female and she is on high blood pressure medication. She's on, I'm sorry, warfarin, um, which is a blood thinner. Then she's on, you know, Humalog and metformin for, for diabetes. What do you recommend I do? You know, or you don't even have to say, what do I recommend? We're just going to tell you, okay, great. Go this, like go this route. And then no matter what Marissa told me, whether I knew what I was going to do or not, I'm going to say, okay, great. That's exactly what I was thinking. Thank you so much, Marissa. And I'm going to hang up the phone and then I'm going to look at Betty in the eyes and I'm going to say, Betty, Marissa thinks exactly what I think. I just want to make sure we didn't waste any unnecessary time here today. We're going to go ahead and I believe that we can possibly get you covered with a company called Prosperity. Now, here's the thing, Betty. I, I really like to believe that I'm excellent at what I do. But with that being said, you know, I do make some mistakes. Um, so what I'm going to recommend today is that we are going to submit an application. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need your social security number and banking information. Now, this banking information is not so that you can be charged. In fact, you and I today will pick a day specifically that works for you for it to be charged. Um, but it's a way for the insurance company to validate that you're not using your neighbor's money or my money or anything like that to pay for this. Is there any reason you wouldn't want to move forward with that? And then, you know, if you get a pushback of anything of, you know, well, why do we need to submit an application? Because like I said, Betty, I am really good at what I do, but there is a chance that you might not be approved where I believe you will. I don't know your entire medical history. And the only way for us to know for sure whether or not you'll be approved is by submitting an application and hearing it back from the insurance company. Now, if for whatever reason, Betty, you do get denied today, don't worry about that. Lucky for you, I work with over 30 different carriers and we will absolutely be able to get coverage in place. It just might not be with a carrier that I anticipate that we can get you approved with today. And then that's it. Yeah, that was gold, Tor. That was amazing. Um, and, and I think too, what you said to her is like not being uncomfortable with that. So when I first went in the home, I was like, Hey, I, you know, I don't want to call my manager guys. Your clients actually like when you do that because it makes them feel like you, you consulted a specialist. So what I always said is like, and this is what Tori said, I'm just going to give my, my senior underwriter, my product specialist, a call gets me on the phone. Hey, Marissa, this is where we're at. And then exactly. Oh, cool. Exactly. What I was thinking, what they feel like is that you called a specialist or you called for help. So now they're double, like you've doubled down on the fact that you're making a decision, a good decision for their family. So if you're uncomfortable about calling in the home, definitely call in the home. They actually like it because they feel like you're doing your job better for them. Absolutely. Um, and Sorry, Marissa. I do think like you were great at just like Marissa came out of the gate, guys, like never knew anything about insurance. And she would sit with somebody and be like, John, I've been doing this for 30 years. And she's like 20 years old. <laughs> okay. And you know, Marissa was just like very confident and she had that about her and that worked for her. Um, where I was the polar opposite. I was like for the first like nine months, I was like, Hey guys, you guys are actually my first family ever. So I might just need a little bit of, of extra help from my manager. Is there any reason that wouldn't be okay today? Like, and just finding what works for you. Like, and I also think so many people get so nervous to tell like potential clients or clients that they are new. And I don't think that that's anything to be ashamed of. We all started somewhere. A lot of the people that we deal with are older and they were all new to something too. Um, so I think like that it's totally okay to say like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm newer. I'm still in training. You're one of my first families that I'm helping by myself. So is it cool? I'm pretty sure I know where I want to go with you, but do you care if I just reach out to my manager really quick and double check? No, one's going to say no. Yeah. And they like that. And they probably feel bad. That's your first day. And they want you to be able to help them. So that I remember Tori would do that. Like nine months in, I would hear her on the phone. She'd be like, sorry, John, this is my first appointment ever. And I'd be like, it's <laughs> fine. I tell everybody that and it makes me like them more. 
<laughs> so it makes her, it makes them like me more. So guys, whatever you're comfortable with, I think that's a really big point too, is finding what works for you. Something that works for me not, might not work for you, but you're going to try everything. You're going to try what Tori said. We're going to talk to Damien next guys. We're going to try a bunch of different things and whatever works best for you stick to that and don't change something just because, you know, Tori is amazing at it. Well, if what Tori is doing, not working for you, then, then find somebody else, you know, Betty Joe just dropped in the, in the chat. Betty Joe's been here like a year. She calls, she calls me in every single home still. So it's huge. You guys utilize that you have resources. So, um, Tori, thank you so much for getting on. Um, you've been a complete powerhouse, a leader on our team, and I'm just so excited, um, and happy to have you on. And I think, um, everyone probably took a lot of notes because you absolutely crushed it. Thank you for having me on Marissa. You need me to make you the host. again. I need you to make me the host pretty please. Okay. Um, all right, guys, drop a TD in the chat. If you are fired up about what Tori had to say, and then, oh, TD and DT. And then drop a DT if you're fired about what Damien's going to say next. Nice. Um, I want to introduce you and welcome you um, and introduce you to our, our literal top telesales producer that we have in the entire agency. And he's very, very new, um, Mr. Damien Tackett. So he has been absolutely crushing it. Damien, I'm honored to have you on tonight. Um, okay, let me shut up and have you introduce yourself. Sure. Well, the honor is mine. This is very cool. Um, before the pandemic, I owned some brick and mortar businesses. And uh, right before I found FFL, my little pizza shop was dying. Uh, by luck, I found some videos of Sean on YouTube, watched him like for three days straight and found Clay. Here I am. Here you are. And not only here you are, like just existing, you're here and you have um, absolutely been crushing it all over the phone. So Damien, what I wanted to do tonight is I kind of wanted to, I wanted you to take us A to Z on, sure. you know, how it started, why you decided telesales, you know, who you think should go telesales and then exactly what that looks like. I think a lot of agents love the idea of like, Hey, I can sit at home in my pajamas and make money per se. But what does that really look like as far as work ethic, schedule, leads, all of the above? Sure. Um, I went telesales only by necessity. I had no other choice. I was running my pizza shop for 13 hours a day. I live in New York State, so we're very limited as far as carriers. But I wasn't going to let something as ridiculous as logistics and time stop me from winning. Um, so, yeah, I mean, telesales is great. But what always scares me is... It's not an easier solution. It's not a secret sauce. Uh, it's literally constant dials, constant dials. I got my butt kicked thoroughly for the first several weeks of this, but uh, you get your feet about you. You find your voice. Yeah, absolutely. And you've been doing, I mean, you've been on Zoom every single day. You've been helping brand new agents. I mean, can you walk us through, um, you know, what your schedule is. So when do you buy leads? How many do you buy? What leads are you, are you getting? And then what is your, what is your daily seven day a week schedule? Sure. Well, my schedule is eight o'clock ish until West coast is done nine o'clock ish, um, 10 o'clock my time. I have to have at least 800 leads a week, sometimes more. I'm using the three month leads because for me, it's about as many it's as many swings of the bat as I can possibly get. So I, I like the old three month leads out of the CRM. I mean, they, they do great for me. Uh, generally I'm working seven days a week. I'm not saying that I'm working all day, seven days a week, but I'm working seven days a week. Damien, do you have a, uh, like an appointment goal? Like, do you have a, like, um, you know, I need to do this much AP or I need to protect this many families or this many dials. I've heard a lot of people that do that. Well, my overall goal is Hall of Fame and I will reach it. But um, on a daily basis, I don't want to make less than $1,000 in submitted premium. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. If I see that, I'm going to keep going. Uh, and I'm not saying I get that every day, but that's that's my goal for the day. Yeah. So, Damien, you, you talked about the leads. You talked about how three month old to get you the most at bats, which are the most budget friendly. So um, do you are you a believer that all leads are good leads? Um, and what is your why do you like the three month old leads? Why wouldn't you be, you know, spending 80, 90 dollars on a live transfer? Sure. Um, for the simple fact of the matter. And, and I do believe all leads are, are good leads. They're all the same. Uh, there's a video that Sean said, um, write somebody's name and number on a cup. And I'll treat that as the best lead that I've ever had. 
And it makes perfect sense. It's somebody who reached out at some point in time. I don't care how old they are. I just want as many of them as I can possibly get for the budget that I have. So I'm much happier with hundreds of the three month old leads than I would be with one or two live transfers. Yeah, absolutely. And the return on the investment is pretty insane. It's insane. It's insane for sure. And with the workspots discount, I can't, it's just, it gets crazier. Just insane. It just keeps getting crazier. Okay. So Damien, are you using um, like a power dialer, like phone burner? Both. Um, I'll use, I'll use the, I have the phone burner. I use the phone burner. Um, I'll also dial through uh, different virtual phones and it really just depends on what I'm doing. And and if I want to be able to hear and let other people hear my call too. So, I mean, I use them both the phone burner for sure. Let you get in front of a lot more people. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And so Damien, one thing that you've also done really well is one, you're a powerhouse. You protect 10 families a week now, all of a sudden, which is crazy, but you've really been open about getting on zoom, getting with your camera on unmuting yourself. So that way other people can learn from you, but then also being open to feedback. So how do you think that that had anything to do with your success? How important do you think that is for new agents to get uncomfortable like that? Oh my gosh, it's everything. So uh, some of this brand new doesn't realize how lucky we are. We have powerhouses like Clay, like Erica, Darlene, uh, Betty Jo. And I took a little bit from each one of them before I found my voice. You know what I mean? And if if you don't let other people hear you, then there's no way you can be coached. So that was huge. Probably the biggest thing. Yeah. And you guys, Damien is on live dials literally every single day. So when it comes to telesales, and this is why I wanted to get him on here tonight, when it comes to telesales, guys, there's no Monday and Thursday are a dial day because you have to dial all the time. So you have to be able to fit it into your schedule to say, hey, I need to protect this many families or, you know, I need to make this many dials. So, um, Damien, are you a one call closer or are you booking out appointments like phone appointments like for tomorrow? 100% one call close. And I'll tell you why. Perfect. I really stink at getting people back on the phone. I'm really, really bad at it. So when I started to kind of figure this out, I was one call close. And then I had this brilliant idea since that was working, I was going to try something else. And then I tried to book appointments, crashed and burned. So unless someone is in traction, skydiving, or in the middle of driving on a racetrack, it's a one call close. Okay, perfect. I love it. So can you walk us through like the first two minutes, like you call me, I can role play it if you want about how you're setting that up, get me prepared that I'm going to be on the phone for 20 minutes right now. And I'll tell you what, that's, in my opinion, that's the most important thing other than work. And then when you're done working, work some more. That's the most important thing. For me, it's 100% posture. If I don't come in, I I don't ask anybody what they want to do. I tell them what they're going to do. Because I don't want my doctor to ask to have me tell him what to do. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, I'll show you. Do you want want me to pretend I'm calling you? Yeah, let's do it. I'll be your client. All right. Ring. Hello. Marissa. Yeah. Marissa, Damian Tackett. I'm the underwriting manager at the Columbus Benefits Office. And we tried to send you some mail last week. It came back not deliverable. Are you still at 24 Sycamore Street? Yeah. Yeah, 422 Sycamore Street, right? Yep, that's where I'm at. Yeah, that's odd. So I also have an email of marissa at gmail.com. Does that still work? Um, yep, that's my email. And you're able to get into your email if you needed to? Um, yeah, I, I can. Damien, what was it that you were trying to send me? Sure. I'm the underwriting manager at the Columbus Insurance Office. And the reason why I was trying to get a hold of you is you had requested information about the state regulated final expense insurance. And we tried to send out this packet of information, but it came back and it looks like we really dropped the ball, Marissa. I apologize. It's taken us so long. Have you spoken to anybody else in my office or am I the first guy? Um, I've had a bunch of people calling me, but they never said they were a manager. Sure. Sure. Okay. So like I said, I am the manager of the underwriting department. And what we do is we get you the information about the programs you requested And there's two ways that we can do this, Marissa. Either I can dispatch an agent to your home to do this in person, or you and I can handle it on the phone. Which one works best for you? I'd probably prefer to do it over the phone. Okay, sounds good. All right, so that's, that's, if I was to give one piece of advice, there it is, right there. Get them to choose the phone. 
because by getting them to choose the phone, you don't have to foreshadow the social security number. You don't have to foreshadow the bank account. They're already in their mind accepting that, hey, this is the stuff that's going to happen. Wow. And that's the only script I have. So from there, it's just the medical underwriting, this problem, that problem, that problem. But then I get the beneficiary almost instantly. And I'm repeating the beneficiary seven, eight, nine, tens throughout the call. Yeah. Guy, that was huge. I'm having trouble being the client right now because I wanted to take notes on what you were saying. So I was losing track of, of being Marissa, the client, you guys, a lot of, a lot of really good word tracks there. First of all, he doesn't sound like a salesperson at all. Second of all, he verified all my information before he even told me why he was calling. So I'm, I'm the underwriting manager here. Looks like we sent out some mail and it was not deliverable. That's huge because then what you've done is you've piqued curiosity of someone like, what mail was I getting? No one tried to send me an email. I want to know what I was trying to get. So then he's like, what is this your address? Yes. And I have an, I have a, an, an email address of here and a birthday. Is that you? Yeah. So he was able to confirm my information, which I would definitely, if I was an actual real client, I would have done that as well. <laughs> so, you know, he was able to confirm my information before he even told me what it was about. Um, and so Damien, that's huge. You guys, the other thing is he, what he does really well is he acts like he's just having a regular conversation. He's not like, Hey, this is Damien. I'm super excited to sell you life insurance. He's like, Hey, this is just my job. I'm the manager here. If you want me to, and, and he steers them the way he wants them to go. Look, if you want me to ditch that somebody out to your house, you'll notice his tone. Like he's not that excited about it. Look, if you want me to dispatch somebody out there, we can take, we could do it or we could just do it over the phone. And then automatically they're like, yeah, he doesn't want to dispatch anybody out here. I don't want them to come out here. Um, so that's huge. Um, Damien, that was fantastic. I'm going to be using that tomorrow. Um, and the other thing that he does really well, you guys, is he blames himself. I'm really sorry that this slipped through the cracks. I'm really sorry we weren't able to get this. You looks like we dropped the ball. Um, that's fantastic. Um, Damien, do you do anything once you get him to agree to the phone appointment? Do you do anything, um, to foreshadow the banking information or anything like that? Or you just go straight into the application? Not a thing because in my mind, if I, if I spend a lot of time talking about that, then I'm making it weird in their head Mm -hmm. because I, I mean, just to me, some people do, and they're incredible, but to me, I don't really foreshadow it. Yeah. And Damien, I've heard you actually on the phone a lot and you build a lot of rapport in the terms of like, you're very conversational. Like if someone says, I live in Michigan, you're like, oh yeah, I used to live here. You know, I'm very, you know, snow and you're very like, you know, conversational. They say, I don't remember. You're like, yeah, I don't really remember this either. Like, do you think that that has helped you um, be able to get people to trust you as just sounding like very normal and casual? Oh, for sure. But there's, there's like three posture changes in the call that are very important. So if I try to write the policy with my initial posture, it's not going to work. And if I use the posture I take when I write the policy in the first part of the call, it's not going to work. So like you said, the first part of the call, I'm just the manager. I'm doing my job. I'm getting the information. But from the minute I get the social security number, which is huge, it all changes. That's when I get the report because from there, I'm going to have to get the checking account information. And that's where I need the report. But you can't. You can't go there until you've gone to your first step. Right. That's huge. Um, okay. Now, Damien, we already have people dropping in the chat that they need your script. So after this call, do you have your script written out somewhere? The only thing that's scripted is that very first blurb where, where I uh, tell you that the mail came back undeliverable, but I'm glad to share that. Okay, perfect. So Damien, if I, um, because you're on three month old lead, so I'm your client and I say, you know, Damon, I, I, I hear the mail was undeliverable. I don't really remember filling that out. What do you say? Yeah, I hear you. And it looks like this was done about three months ago. So that address is still good, right? The 422 here street. Yeah. Or wherever else I am in the car and the, the call. Yeah, I understand. You know, it looks like this was done quite a while ago. I'm so sorry we dropped the ball. It's been like we've been backed up since COVID started. But don't worry, I'm going to take care of this now. I am the manager and then right into the health questions. Perfect. I love that guy. So he just goes right back to it. Perfect. I don't care that you don't remember it. Is your address still 422 success lane? Perfect. I'm glad you don't remember it. Is this still your address? Is this still your email address? Right back to it. Um, I think that's huge. Now, Damien, when, when you get the beneficiary name, how do you, how do you ask for that? Oh yeah. Um, So I, I've gone through the, um, the very first part we've, we verified the address and all of that stuff. And then I'll say, okay, John, so when you did submit this request for information three months ago, 
who are you looking to protect? Who's your beneficiary? If you died yesterday, who would be having trouble today? Okay. And they say my wife. Yeah, always. They'll always tell me who they were looking to protect, even if they just told me they didn't fill out a form. Okay, perfect. You guys, another, another good note there is that he says he's the manager. Um, that's huge. People always want to talk to the manager, someone who they think is in charge, someone who they think knows better than maybe the other agents that have called them. Um, okay, Damien, they say, no worries. I got that already taken care of. I already have coverage. Absolutely. That's why I'm calling you, Marissa. Have you received your policy paperwork yet? Uh, I, I don't think so. Where is it supposed to come from? Yeah. So that's why I'm calling Marissa. What we need to do is I just need to make sure that you were placed in the right place, that this fits your budget and it satisfies your needs. So you said that we're taking care of Jonathan, your son, with you pass, correct? Right. Yep. Okay. And Jonathan, how old is he? Uh, he's 19. 19. Wow. Okay. Young one still got, I remember when I was 19, it seems like forever ago. In this case, it was forever ago, but I'll find whatever they gave me. And that's what I'm going to start using at that point, whatever they show me about their life. That's what I'm working with. I love it. That's complete gold. Um, okay. So, I mean, I could pretty much have you on here all night and I'm probably going to be on live dials for the next like seven days, just trying to do everything you're doing. Um, but one thing you guys, this did not come like, he didn't just come out of the gate on his first day. Like he said, this took me two, three weeks of listening to other people, piecing together, Betty, Joe, Darlene, Clay, what was working, Erica, what wasn't working and, and finding his own thing and finding what works for him. So um, Damien, I want you to give us kind of one last piece of advice for anybody that is wanting to do telesales, struggling with telesales, thinking about doing it. If there's one sort of piece of advice that you can give them, what would you leave them with tonight? Sure. And uh, when I was struggling with telesales, it came entirely back to me. Okay. Especially in the beginning. And I've always worked for myself, so I shouldn't have done this, but I did. I confused the hours that I thought I was working with the hours that I actually was working, right? So you can't sit down at your desk for 10 hours, but dial for three hours and think, hey, I'm gonna make 20,000 in premium. It's not gonna happen no matter what you do. So when I realized that, and I started concentrating on the things that actually could make money, that's when things changed. And when I learned how to ask for help, because I'm bad at that, I've never had an opportunity to do that. Um, Clay's awesome. He had to shake me to do that. Um, that's when things changed, but you have to posture up work. And then when you're done working, work some more and ask for help. That's, that's the secret sauce. Work and work some more. I love it. You guys, um, Damien, that is seriously gold. I wish we had a bunch more time so that we can continue to go through like every bits and piece of your, of your script. But you guys, Damien is on live dials literally every day. So if you guys are, I know everyone's eating up this call. Well, guess what? You can see him every single day and he can help you and he can show you what to do and you can learn from him. So, um, Damien, thank you so much. Um, I'm super excited uh, about you. I'm super excited for you and I'm just honored to work with you. And I can't thank you enough for getting on with us tonight and, and sharing with the team, um, some things that we can implement. Honor was all mine. Thank you so much for asking. You're welcome. And Damien, you are the host of the meeting. So if you can end it for us, you got it. Have a good best. night. Bye guys. Have a good night.